Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or good day to wherever you are in the world. Uh, this may be one of the most important podcasts that we've ever conducted to date. Even more paramount in importance, believe it or not, to the Godly Global Reset for which we started this channel and placed so much emphasis. I could easily speak to you today extemporaneously off the cuff from my heart, <clears throat> and to some extent I am, but it mattered enough that I've written it down in, in notes and refined it over the last couple weeks. The Lord has placed a heavy burden on my heart, I feel, to get this message out. It was one that I was not comfortable with, but we have to often be bold and brave and say things when it matters most and put our feelings aside and do what's important to be obedient. And that's what I'm doing today to the best of our ability. Following commentary is based on my own personal thoughts and feelings. It isn't designed to create controversy or ruffle feathers, although by the very nature of the subject matter, I'm quite sure it will achieve both. Nevertheless, still have to take a stand, and this is one of those times. Ecclesiastes 3 says, for everything there is a season, a time to search, a time to quit searching, a time to be quiet, and a time to speak. In the spirit of that message, I would like to propose a clarion call to arms, and specifically for this message speaking to the faith-based community in churches, which this channel was wholly created for in the first place. I'm talking to all of you out there in churches and communities all across America, whether you're Baptist, First Baptist, Southern Baptist, Catholic, uh, Protestant, Methodist, Pentecostal, non-dominational, Southern Baptist, as I said, even Jewish, uh, conservative, or Orthodox, who have a believing in a being higher than yourself. Um, we need to get out and vote, period. This election is indubitably, without a doubt, the single most important thing that we will see in our recent history's lifetime. And I would argue it's probably the most important election of our lifetime to date. This is not a reason or a season or a year to sit by passively on the sidelines and just forego voting. We need all of you in the churches to get out and vote. If you think your vote doesn't matter, you're wrong. It does. Has it been rigged in the past? Well, of course, absolutely. But that's all the more reason to go and get involved, because if you think your vote doesn't matter, it doesn't count. Every non-vote is a vote. You're tacitly giving away what's left of your stripped freedoms and liberties to a deep state that never did cared about you and doesn't care about you. Every time you don't vote, you play right into their hands. Stop helping them out. They've had more than enough leverage for far too long. And if one of the reasons that you haven't been voting is because you think we don't have a real choice and that the candidates are exactly the same, they're not. There is an absolute inherent difference between the two. If you think that a candidate has to be perfect in order for you to cast your vote, well, then you might as well just wait for Jesus to return, which is exactly what some of you are doing. That's the position I know, as I'm a churchgoer too, that some of you are taking. And that's a very unfortunate mindset. None of you know when that's going to be. So how about just ruling and reigning until um, he returns, as he calls us to do? You know, it, it occurred to me in all this that Kim Clement, one of the most accurate prophets in our time, saw a vision years ago where he saw God using a non-praying man to turn him into a praying man and put him in the highest seat in the land, a hot-blooded man. If you've watched President Trump over the last eight years, you should witness have, or have known by now that his demeanor has, has changed subtly and yet drastically. How he has been prayed over and has prayed numerous times, both on, on and off camera. How he has attended churches openly and even surrounded himself with the very well-respected Dr. Ben Carson, many of which you had voted for, I'm sure, in the past. A man whose salts and light and fruit have imbued itself over decades of discipline and are also permeating themselves over President Trump. In short, he's gone a massive, and undergone a massive transformation in a relatively short period of time. He is literally the embodiment of a modern day King Cyrus or David, whereby he restored Israel. He made Jerusalem the capital in 2017, something that previous so-called leaders in the past failed to do. They talked a great deal, but had no action. We can see he's a man of action. And you see what he did in his first term, spanning the globe to work with world leaders, forcing them to capitulate and get off the 
maritime law, maritime law monarchy system and return the gold back to America, all while working to strengthen the BRICS and free them off the dollar debt hedge money system, which, by the way, happens next week. Interesting fact, maybe some of you may not know, many years ago, Gandhi was approached by Christian missionaries in India. He was subsequently interviewed by a British news agency whereby they asked him, why don't you become a Christian? You have all the tenets and mindset of a Christian. You embody all the facets of a Christian. And you display a lot of the, the hearts and tenets of Christ. And his response was very telling. He said, I would have been. Then I met some. Are we truly being ambassadors of Christ wherever we go? Do non-believers and onlookers see the light in us? Or do they see the world in the flesh when they see us? And this part pains me to say, but we're about honesty in this channel as we're doing this podcast. So I have to say that I've met a lot of non-believers in the past in my life throughout comings and goings that have exhibited more of a display of Christian tenets than many I have seen in the church. They have a heart for others. They care for neighbors. They're not judgmental. They don't want to see the country destroyed. And the only thing that's really missing in them is a savior and that Christ is deep within their, the love of their hearts, imploring them to be saved. They're, they're enabled to be Christians. It just hasn't been activated yet. You can make the difference in your everyday walk in life. Because like Pastor Tony Dilk, one of the first pastors I met when I came to California, said, be the light, because you may be the only light someone ever sees. But if we're not watering and nurturing that process, then we become part of the problem and not the solution. And then we've not only grieved the community, our churches, but the Lord, most importantly. Then you need to ask yourself a personal question. Am I better off now than I was four years, of, four years ago under his leadership? Can I really afford to not vote or worse, vote against him? Either you're going to support communism at the end of the, the end of your remaining freedoms and a country that we once loved and knew be completely eviscerated or you'll support the last bastion of godly principles, the constitution, sound money, and a real chance of having the foundation of God's country reclaimed. One true nation under Jesus Yeshua. And then there's the most telling and compelling and concerning issue of all that bothers me the most. And I've talked to many believers offline and they concur with me privately. There are a lot of sanctimonious and pious Christians and churches throughout America who think that, quote, they're better than President Trump, that somehow their life is beyond reproach, but he's to be judged. Really? You sure about that? As the Bible says, he was without sin, cast the first stone. Romans says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When you're perfect, then you can be in a position to judge him. Some of you in the church have multiple marriages. Some of you are having affairs on your spouses right now. Ouch, but true. Some of you have money laundered, cheated on your taxes. You don't think there's pedophilia, money laundering, and trafficking going on in churches, especially mega churches across America? Oh, yeah. And that's God is about to expose the churches big time. I know many of you who've left the churches you're in because they've now started to water down the truth to a degree, but there is no more truth. We need to start getting real honest with ourselves and humbling ourselves. None of us can ever afford the cachet of arrogance and sanctimonious thinking. That's a sin to God. And it should be grieving to our hearts. If you're so concerned about him, here's an idea. Why don't you pray for the man? That's what you're supposed to be doing anyways, praying for your leaders, of which he is one and was and will be again. Pray for the man. And then you can take authority in the spirit realm with mighty war angels and have an effectuated change in the man's life. And be, you'll see him become more into the character you've been saying you want him to see. And more importantly, you'll be imbuing it in your own life. Nobody, and I mean nobody in society or in our churches who are supposed to know better, has the right or the cachet or the credit to be judging him until your life, of course, is perfect. If there's ever a time that we needed to come together, it's now. Our greatest strength, folks, is in our synergy. The enemy loves division. God hates it. When you get to heaven, he's not going to ask you what church you went to or what denomination of faith you were in. He wants to know, how did you tell people about my son, Jesus, and how did you live out the tenets I gave you? Did you pay forward the grace and mercy I gave you? Did you teach people about the gospel? Did you use your, was your life a walking testimony 
to encourage others to want to become Christians. If we can't get it right in the church, folks, we have no shot of anyone out in the outside world wanting to come in and learn about him. And we are the church wherever we go. It's not confined to four walls. Everywhere we go, the grocery store, gas station, uh, what's left of the malls, Walmart, your targets, whatever, anywhere and everywhere we go, we are walking ambassadors for him or we're walking ambassadors for Satan. It's one or the other. There's no in between. So either be hot for him or be cold, but don't be lukewarm because that's why he's condemning the churches. He's spitting them out of his mouth because there's too many lukewarm Christians. We don't have time for this legalistic crap, and that's what it is. It's just another dividing line that gets in the way of God's agenda, and you make it more about you than you do about him. If half of the churches right now, which, by the way, is roughly 90 million people, that's one-third of the legal population of America, just half of you voted for President Trump, he'd have such a clear and vast lead, it would be insurmountable for the deep state to cheat. They couldn't cheat their way out of a paper bag. So you literally are going to make the difference this year, one way or the other. This is not a time to sit passively on the sidelines. Please, from my heart, I implore you as believers of any denomination to get out and vote early or on election day if we have one. And there's only one person who's risked his life, his family's life, for his future and all of us, who's even remotely interested in any tenets of the Lord and getting those represented, who's giving you, quote, religious freedoms to go out and practice your faith without being executed like they are in many other countries. That's President Donald J. Trump. If you think it's been rough the last four years, if you don't get this correct, it's going to be an absolute nightmare compared to what's waiting for us on the other side. You don't want to see that come to fruition, and neither do I, I can assure you. So that's why this is so much more important than just the reset. There will be no reset unless he wins, which he must and he will. And when you go out to vote, speak to a supervisor beforehand and request a physical paper ballot with a pen. Don't trust the machines, and for goodness sakes, don't do a mail-in ballot, and if you can avoid it, an absentee ballot. Do it in person. Invest the 10 to 15 minutes that will effectuate the outcome of the country, your family, and future families' future. We need everyone, and I mean everyone involved. The stakes could not be higher or more impactful than they are right now. And I, that's why you've never seen me make a podcast like this, because I would no, never normally do it, but we're not in normal times. This is a must-win situation. We're in a season where the wheat and the tares are being separated, where vindication is happening. You see it left and right, for the, especially those of you in this community, and things that people said would never happen, like the dinar, like him winning, like XRP breaking free, like all this nonsense that haters always say because they don't want it to come true because they know when it does, it's the end of that. That things that people said would never happen are happening. They're happening right now, and they're going to continue through this year into next year. It's just a question of which way it goes. Finally, and this is probably my singular most important point, ladies and gentlemen. To drive the point home additionally a step further, this election is not about black versus white, old versus young, Republican or Democrat, man or woman. This is about one thing and one thing only. Ready? Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, mighty powers in the dark world and evil spirits in the heavenly places, AKA spiritual warfare. That's what this is about, good versus evil. Please make sure you're on the right side of history. Thank you for your time and attention. God bless you and keep you. And I pray that you give this serious and deep consideration and will choose to go out and vote and be an active participation participant in this year's critical election. Thank you. God bless you. Bye for now.